This video will cover the topic, graphing a piecewise defined function, problem type 1. Let's start off by taking a look at an example. Here, we are being asked to graph a piecewise function defined as f of x is equal to 1 if x is less than or equal to negative 2, f of x is equal to x if x is greater than negative 2 but less than 2, and f of x is equal to 1 if x is greater than or equal to 2. Wow, there are so many parts to that problem. Where should I start? Great question. Let's start by breaking it down piece by piece and looking at each graph individually. First, let's take a look at the graph f of x is equal to 1, where x is less than or equal to negative 2. Recall that when a function is equal to a constant, the graph of that entire function is a straight line at that specified constant. So, in this case, we graph a straight horizontal line through y is equal to 1. Once we have an idea what our graph is going to look like, let's apply the restrictions placed on the domain. In this case, we are asked to make x less than or equal to negative 2 meaning we are going to stop our graph at x is equal to negative 2 and place a closed circle at that corresponding y value to indicate that the value for x is equal to negative 2 is included within this interval. Now we can erase everything greater than x is equal to negative 2. And the first graph of our piecewise function is now complete. Now, let's look at the second piece of our piecewise function, where f of x is equal to x if x is greater than negative 2 but less than 2. First, let's plot our graph f of x is equal to x. Next, let's look at our domain restriction so we can determine what the y values at the endpoints of our function are going to be. We can determine these endpoints by plugging in x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to 2 into the equation f of x is equal to x. In this case, f of negative 2 is equal to negative 2 and f of 2 is equal to 2. Now, let's plot these points on our graph. Keeping in mind that since the problem states that x is greater than but not equal to negative 2, our point at x is equal to negative 2 is not completely filled in. Same thing goes for x is equal to 2. Since the problem states that x is less than 2, the circle at x is equal to 2 is not completely filled in either. Now, we can erase all parts of the graph outside the interval x is greater than negative 2 and less than 2. And the resulting graph is the second portion of our piecewise function. Wait, so tell me again why the circles at x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2 are not shaded in? The circles at x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to 2 are not shaded in because our initial problem states that x is greater than negative 2 but less than 2, meaning that the y value of our function at x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to 2 is not included within our interval. So whenever a question says that a domain is less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, the circle at the end of the graph is completely filled in, and when we are told that the domain is just less than or greater than, the circle at the end of the graph is left open? Exactly. Sounds like you've got it down. Now, we're going to graph our final piece, the graph f of x is equal to 1, where x is greater than or equal to 2. Once again, we are going to graph a straight horizontal line at y is equal to 1. Now, let's place the restriction x is greater than or equal to 2 on the graph and plot our endpoint. Keeping in mind that since the problem states that x is greater than or equal to 2, our point at x is equal to 2 is completely filled in. Now, we can raise all y values less than x is equal to 2. And, our third and final piece of our piecewise function is now complete. Now, let's transfer all three pieces of our piecewise function over to a single graph. And our piecewise defined function is complete.
So to graph a piecewise function, we need to graph each part of the function individually. Solve for the endpoints of each graph by substituting in the x values given and solving for the corresponding y values, and plot the endpoints according to the specified domains. Then we can combine all the graphs to find our resulting piecewise functions. Precisely. It sounds like you really understand the topic. 